quid. So yeah, there's another mods crashing it. So we'll just go with what we can here. Sorry about the jarring transition though. So we've got our armor here, and if we do the same with a armor stand or a horse, we'll see what happens. So we'll get a horse, and then we'll get a, I don't know, a sheep or something. We'll see what happens there, and we'll get an armor stand. So we need that. So, armor stand, we can see they have 20 health. And if we put the armor on here, we can see how much armor they have, so this would probably be the same for players if you were seeing them, and it would probably say their name. You've got obviously the stats, the armor on the side, we'll get a horse and tame them, and see what happens. Yeah, well that was quick, didn't know that would happen. So if we just do this, we can see that our horse has armor, and so on. We'll try with the name tag and see if it'll also acknowledge those. I guess it will. So we'll say horsey because why not when being original. And there we go. So you can see that presented as well. And it also displays in the actual icon as well. Or what they look like. Um, so yeah, that's it for mobs and such and other armor elements. So let's see. Uh, player face, we've done that. Entity inspect. So the armor value. Uh, entity inspect the that, so just move it over a bit. And that's really not going to help that much. There we go. So that removes that arm element there, not this one here that you're wearing. Interesting. So that's that. So that's what that does. Okay. Next we have the hotbar, which adds in, obviously, the ability for you to... Why up with the... Oh wait, I don't have the other one, that's why. So that can obviously remove it, that's for... So yeah, that's for removing that visually. That's for moving where it is on screen. I don't know if that's going to... No, that's probably more so for still if you have the modern one or some others. Extended... Uh, hotbar, here we go. Uh, prevent? No. Render. Prevent rendering. I don't know why that's gone off screen. That's interesting. I don't know where it's gone now. Um, sword. So that's interesting. Okay, so stop that there. Um, right. Ah, uh, here we go. Prevent rendering. That's what I was doing. That's why. Oh, it also counts the offhand as well. That is good to know. Um, so we ha can move that over a bit if we want. Oops, that's not correct. So we put that to about 200, I think. No, 150. 125, I think. And that's about in the middle. So, yeah. You can move your hotbar if you want. And obviously, present it or not. Or prevent it or not. Uh, for the, which was this, player armor, can prevent that, we'll show the vanilla version, that didn't change much, so that's interesting, uh, we'll just do that, nope, okay, because it does update, obviously, so we could do this, uh, that, that's not really changing much, so it's not that display, it's the other one on the hotbar, I assume, within survival, I guess. Yeah, so that's most of the case there. So we change those elements, there we go. So you've got the vanilla one, you've got the rendering, and such, and so on. Uh, let's see, if we move you, move you, and put you as zero, what happens? That, no. Either way, it obviously we'll present it accordingly. Um, so, yeah. Otherwise, we have mount health. So that's obviously for things like your horses, or I guess maybe striders and pigs and other things. So you've got the percentage, you've got sort of the similar elements that we've already obviously covered. So we just look at our horse, and then we actually do this. And see what happens. So off. Uh, no, that's not it. And, oh wait, that's where you're on them. Whoops. There we go. So that's what we want. So 
we just go now, you can see the following is now percentage or not. And obviously instead of your health, it's now the mount's health. What is that? Uh, mount jumper. So you can see it now. We'll limit it in a way. You can change the position, of course, and all the other settings we've obviously covered. And there's the jump bar there. And we'll now see it in action. So it fills all with the same color, like so. So that makes that easier. Next, we have the player level. So if we want to change that to the original or not. I don't know why that's not showing up really. No, no. Uh, let's see. Go back. So that's not changing anytime soon. No. But either way, obviously that's the experience bar and the other sort of level and such. And obviously it would go back to the regular vanilla one with the following and the rendering and otherwise we've already covered. Um, let's see, for the item details, we've got reduced detail size, so that's for that sort of there. So I assume even if we have, say, our sword in hand, that'll also be changed. So we can reduce the size of that display there. Um, we've got the arrow count, which I don't have any arrows on me, so we'll just get some of those. Currently not counting it. Oh wait, I haven't enabled it yet. That would be interesting. Only when I'm firing a bow or holding a bow, I assume is when that kicks in. Now it does. Yep. So once I've got a bow on, a bow available, it'll show it. So that's fine. Uh, block count. I don't have any there. So I assume that's like every block in my inventory. At a guess, we get say some cobble. Um, nope, just anything in hand. Alright, it's not, I assume, going to work with a builder's wand or anything like that, because it's not going to, nope, because that's obviously not related. So with how many blocks we have in our inventory, we can set the armor positioning, I assume. Yep, so that's for that one. That's the item positioning for things like your blocks and arrows and sword. Uh, otherwise, armor, if we want it to be removed or not, whether or not we see item durability or a durability bar, and obviously the arrow position as well, which we have there, so if I had the arrows, for example, we'll move that over so that can be changed, and we've got durability as well. So if you just fire an arrow, for example, or we'll just break a block, we can see, of course, under here, item durability, making it display or not, and durability bar being shown um, alongside the um, actual amount of durability that you have. So, yeah. So if you don't want the durability bar and you just want it to be more seamless, you can do that. Uh, let's see. Finally, we have the compass, which is obviously the bit in the top middle there, which is enabling the disabling options. Um, you can set the color, you can set the coordinate, or display the coordinates or not, so you can toggle that on and off. More immersive compass, which is when you're obviously holding a compass, and you can invert the compass if you want, so that instead of being like so, it's like so. So if we just move here, you can see now, say that we're facing west, and you can see 0.72, so just do that. And then we'll change it, invert it, so that it's now... Um, I guess the opposite of the west. I'm not too sure on that part though. So we just get the compass for the immersive. And we can see here that we now can see it because we have a actual compass in hand, similar to obviously the clock. Um, actually you can just have it in your hotbar, so that's fine as well. Others you do have to have in your actual hand. And then there is status effect. So if we just give ourselves, say, an apple, because why not, that'll give us a multitude of effects to test with. Then we've obviously got those there, we'll just keep eating, and keep eating, and keep eating. And we can see that there. Now if we stop, and we do this, we can see it now rendered vertically instead of horizontally. We can show the timers or not. We can change the scale of them, if they're hard to see. Not that big, of course. Uh, two is probably enough. 
Um, we'll go 1 and then we'll go like 0.1 or something. And you can do that as well. Small them to be larger or smaller. You can change the position of them if you want. On screen or off screen, that's obviously not the correct direction to go. And if you say negative 100, there we go. Um, preventing the event, which we've covered, and rendering we've covered. And you've got the vanilla equivalent like ones there. And that is pretty much everything. Um, I don't think there is a config access. Probably not with this one, maybe with the mod menu, I'm not sure. Um, but we'll check here just in case under Forge. And we'll check under Fabric as well. So there is a uh, RPG hub bar. So we'll go open. If I can get, say, I would hope Notepad will work. Uh, can I get Notepad plus plus? I cannot. Um, I could go Visual Studio Code, but I don't really want. There we go. So there's that. And I don't know if there is a server config as well, which we can also check. Uh, let's see, there is not, and we'll go to Fabric as well, and check to see if it has any as well, so let's see, there is one as well, cool, my guess is they're going to be exactly the same of course, but either way, so, yes, yes, alrighty, it's version 1.0, so you can set the Hopper and pretty much I assume every other sort of setting the mod adds with the bottom and the top right. And I don't think you can move the actual button location either. Um, or any of the menu element sort of buttons to access all the settings. So, yeah. Uh, but if you want to set the settings via an actual file before you boot up the game, then uh, you can do that. Unless you can probably do it in game, use the slash reload command and everything will probably update. I guess, I don't know. Some configs it works, some it doesn't. I'm assuming it's up to the mod developer. Um, but yeah, so you've got your preventions of rendering, rendering the vanilla one, and so on, and a bunch of different options. So yeah, pretty much the same across all of them, uh, or both versions of the mod. But uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching, and goodbye.